Hello, today we will tackle the question, what is the best note-taking app for busy professionals like you? That's a question that we get a lot and we could answer this so straightforward. Just go to our website, go to tools we use. Here you see our tools and there are all the tools that we use in our productivity system and the utility apps. That's it. So I could now answer in this video in just a few seconds, our best note-taking apps are Reader, Tana, Heptabase. And I know you would go into the comments below and say, Reader, that's not a note-taking app. Why do you use two note-taking apps, Tana and Heptabase? And you would probably tell me endless amounts of other note-taking apps that are so much better than those tools. Well, that's why this video is a bit longer. So let's dive into this. Paperless movement, your productivity, your way. Okay, first of all, for those who don't know what this actually is, this is our i framework. It's based on our i methodology and it describes your productivity system holistically. Okay, so you have here PKM for personal knowledge management, which is the green part, this circle. You have PPM, which is personal project management, which is this circle, that's a task management area. And then we come into the business area, the business knowledge management and business project management. That's the first understanding that our members in the membership get when they take on their i journey. That's the first task. Lay out your existing tool stack on this map because it will make you realize already where are your gaps, where are redundancies, where are the friction points between the different productivity tools and so on. Another understanding is that when you place tools inside, there are core applications. This means if you remove this core application from your productivity system, it would hurt your productivity. So this means you would become less efficient finding the information. Daily business will slow down just because you rip out the tool, especially in the business area here. Then we have this outer circle, which are the satellite apps. And here are only apps that are enhancing existing apps. One example would be Superhuman that enhances our experience with the core application Gmail. Okay, that's just for the understanding. And then we have utility apps. And you see here, there's Apple Notes. So for all of you out there wondering now, Tom, where's the handwriting note-taking app? Where's the note-taking app that you use on the iPad that you've talked about on this channel so many times? Here it is, but it's not a core app. It's an intermediate note-taking tool. And if you want to understand better what I mean by this, intermediate note-taking tools like Apple Notes, Notability, Remarkable 2, Paper Notebooks, I posted, there is a video for you already existent. I link it in the description below. So if you want to check it out, go over there to understand all the details. Today we talk about the best note-taking tools. So Apple Notes, in my opinion, is the best capturing tool if you have an iPad that allows you to simply tap on top and I can start writing my notes and that's it. And then I will process these notes later into my core PKM system, core PKM tools. And that's the key understanding here. And there needs to be routines. Routines are part of the task management like a pro course where you learn exactly how you process your information into action. So this being said, my information that I capture in Apple Notes will not stay there. It will move on or it was just temporary. So writing down quickly a phone number to call somebody back, but you don't need this phone number in the future. That's where this goes to. Those here are my core applications. And feel free to go to the website to check this out calmly. But here we have Tana and Heptabase, which are obviously PKM tools for note-taking. And then we have Reader Readwise, which is not really a note-taking application. It's a read later app created by Readwise. So this allows me to capture information quickly. Again, there's another video I made about how to use these in combination, how I funnel information from Reader Tana into Heptabase by the understanding that Reader and Tana are both my shallow thinking systems and Heptabase is my deep thinking system. Another key understanding. And now you see already, I have exactly defined what type information lives in what tool. And therefore it makes total sense that I have two tools living next to each other. I met so many people. We have so many members also in the membership discussing this. Tom and Paco, Paco, our co-founder of the Paperless Movement, use exactly the same setup. How do you actually migrate the information from Tana into Heptabase? And then they say, well, I'm duplicating information and so on. We are not duplicating. 
It's a funnel that's happening here, okay? That's the shallow thinking, fleeting thoughts, meeting nodes. All these things are living mainly in Tana, where I take my daily notes, whatever comes to mind. And if I need to have a thought process, it's an outliner. So therefore I can only use my keyboard to easily move things up and down, left and right. Well, left and right there, it's already limitation. Moving things up and down to reposition my thoughts. So if I have to write an email, if to have to think about an outline for a course or for a book even that we are writing right now, we start in Tana moving things into structure, but then you hit a wall. Then you get the feeling, uh, I need to think about this much more deeper. That's the moment we move on into Heptabase as we have there the visual note taking. We can use the boards in there, but therefore it's already a starting point in Tana. I refined already the thoughts in Tana and then I distill it down into Heptabase. So only the essence goes into Heptabase and I have a completely different starting point in my deep thinking system. And therefore I'm not cluttering up the deep thinking system with fleeting thoughts and all this. By the way, also for tools like ClickUp and so on, if you are so consistent with having shallow thoughts outside and bringing just the essence in your core applications, AI will work a lot better as well, finding the relevant information later on when you're looking for something. So now it's in Heptabase and there we have long form text. Tana doesn't allow your proper text formatting. There are now headers and things like that without using third party plugins. So therefore that's the moment it moves into Heptabase. How do we link things together? Well, the name says it already, links. Tana, each block has an individual link, a URL that I can place then in Heptabase in the new content that I create there. Therefore, I can always reference back to the starting point of this thought process. If there is uh, something more complex going on, and especially if we discuss the things in a team, or I also using it a lot for the videos, we are using Miro, okay? I just published a Miro beginners course on this channel as well. If you are interested in Miro, I really recommend checking it out. This shows you how efficiently you can do brainstorming in Miro. And therefore this is really for visual thoughts and making up your mind about complex things. Whereas in Heptabase, you have that power of long form text that you have the cards in there. So I'm not going into detail about all the different tools and showing them. This is now a conceptual thought I want to share with you in this video, why we are using these tools in combination. The Read Later app is really to get over the FOMO, the fear of missing out. So whenever something interesting comes along the way, it goes into Reader, I save it there. And whenever I start my thinking process and I have a new project starting, then I go to Reader or Tana and I start the digging around in the shallow thinking system and then come, I have a starting point again that I can use in my deep thinking system later on or move it then already to the BKM system in our company. The thing is really, this goes much further as this involves then one of the core concepts of i which is the capturing beast. And there you differentiate between projects, key elements and topics. And if you want to learn more about this, there's another video I will post in the description below that you can check out where I talk a lot more detail how to structure your information in your BKM systems to make it easy to find those things, but also easy to store things. So the moment you find something interesting at the speed of thought, you will be able to place it in your PKM system and that makes it so powerful and efficient to use. So as we are talking here about the best note-taking apps, these are the best note-taking apps for busy professionals. They're easy to learn. Well, Heptabase is easy to learn. Tana has a steep learning curve. For many, we might recommend using Reflect instead of Tana as Reflect is very powerful. It's also kind of an outline. It has amazing AI features. It's not so complex to get into if you're not into databases and things like that. And then Reflect is really a good alternative if you are really just want to capture information quickly. Audio capture is there as well. And many things that you can do in Tana as well. They are not directly comparable, but this is where you really need to understand what do you actually need. What is it that you need in your daily work? Don't just look at YouTube or other channels and check out videos like this one that says, 
best note taking of 2024 and they tell you and try to convince you that this is the best note taking app even worse maybe they are sponsored and then you start using these note taking apps and you ditch your old note taking app you move everything over to the new note taking app after two weeks you realize it's not actually working for me and you lost a lot of time and you get a lot of frustration because you really don't get why is it not working for you? Well, that's why you have to start at a tool agnostic concepts and workflows. That's what our ICO methodology does. It helps you to understand your work processes on a daily basis in a tool agnostic way. That's why we claim it doesn't matter what tools you use, ICO will work to help you to become more productive. In fact, we have a monthly coaching program called the Inner Circle Cohort, where we have six busy professionals with us per month going through their system, setting it up and promising that they will have a highly efficient productivity system in the end of the month. And how do we do this? Exactly this way. We apply our tool agnostic approaches to their systems. So, so many times these members come in, bring in their tool stacks and they say, I'm completely open to change all my tools. Just tell me what I should use. But many times we end up that we don't change anything. It was just the tools not being set up in the right way, realizing the features that these tools already have. And especially members who are stuck in the Microsoft ecosystem, for example. We did this there as well. Microsoft has tools. You just have to understand where to place, what information and how to plan out your action during the day. And you become a lot more efficient just by doing that. So never worry too much about the tools because switching will just harm your system a lot more than you stay with the existing tools and first understand your tool agnostic concepts and workflows that you need to apply to your system. So if you're really serious about bringing your productivity system to the next level, join us in the Pebbles Movement membership, go through the ICO journey yourself and you will see how life-changing this will be. Don't worry about the tools at all. Even that we say here, Tana and Heptabase, it's the best. It is the best for our specific use cases. That's what it is. And we tested so many tools. The thing is, we could easily switch to another tool. If there's a new tool coming out tomorrow, that's better than Heptabase and Tana combined. We would have no issue to move on to this tool because all we do, we migrate our workflows and concepts to the new tool, which are tool agnostic. And then we see if the new tool works better with these concepts than the old tools that we used. If not, it's not better. If it is, well, we moved on and that's great. Talking about information migration and things like that. We could talk in another video, but usually we say, don't worry too much about your old information. Just start with the new tool and keep the other tools running in parallel for a while. So you can start moving over information the moment you need it. Well, that's what we are helping a lot of the paperless movement these kind of subtleties, how to migrate to other tools and so on. In general, this video is about those are the best noting apps that we think at the Payless Movement for us are great. They tick all the boxes in 2024. But the second key takeaway is don't switch to these tools if you already have an existing system. Lay out your tools on this framework first. We also have a note-taking specific framework, which is part of the digital note-taking like a pro course in the iCore Journal membership. So if you're really serious, as I said, join us in the membership and you will figure out yourself how good your productivity system actually is already and how we can help you to improve the subtleties. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so I can catch you up in the next one.